Attention, Austin guitar players and bass players. Are you in need of setup or repair on your axe? Well, I have the guy for you, gang. That's Jason Swedberg over at J. Scott Luthery, and you can find him at J. Scott Luthery on Instagram. Now, if you listen to the show, you know I've been talking about Jason for years. Why is that? Because I've been taking my guitars to Jason for over 20 years. Not only does he do the best job, but he has the best prices and the fastest service in town. Again, find him at J. Scott Luthery on Instagram. Not only is he doing an amazing job repairing and setting up guitars, he is now building guitars. That's right. He built me an SG Junior, which I have, and it sounds amazing. It feels great. It's, it's the very first SG Jr. he ever built. I've got a J. Scott Luthery SG Jr. You can go see him at uh, J. Scott Luthery on Instagram. Get a guitar built. Get your guitars fixed. Get them set up. It's time, man. They've been hanging on the wall all through COVID. Now it's time to get them out, get them fixed, and get out there and play. J. Scott Luthery on Instagram. Let's get down. Hey, gang. It's Johnny. I just want to take a second to talk to you guys about engagement. Right now, you're listening to the show, and I'm not sure exactly what platform you're listening to it on. But whatever platform you're listening to it on, you, you can subscribe to it and get an alert every time a new show drops, usually every Tuesday and every Friday. New shows every Tuesday and every Friday. Whatever platform you're listening on, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Overcast, Stitcher, any platform, you can subscribe to it. And if you can leave a comment, leave a star, share it on your social media if it's something that you like, Please do that. We encourage you to do that. And also, as far as social media goes, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I am at Johnny Gowdy on Instagram and Twitter. Give us a follow. Also, you can like our Facebook page. How did I get here? Please do. Anyway, all I want to say is you like a show, share it. Use the hashtag. How did I get here? Pod. We'll give you a shout out. Thank you so much for listening to the show and engage. Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys all had a good weekend, whatever it is you did this weekend. It was a gorgeous weekend here in Austin, and I spent a lot of it outside with my dog, Rosie. We had a great time. Um, I had a gig that I was supposed to play out of town on Friday, but it got canceled. The clients had a family emergency and had to leave town. So I don't know if it's canceled or postponed, but there's, there was no gig on Friday. I didn't have to leave town, so I ended up staying home. And uh, just hanging out with Rosie that night and stuff. And then Saturday, I went to my friend Kathy Valentine's birthday party. I have not seen her in a few months. She went to England for a few months. If you follow her on social media, you know that. She was over there in the Europe kicking it for like since the end of October or something like that. Anyway, she'd been back for like a few days. It was She had her birthday party. It was great going there. It was great to see her. Great to catch up with her. Great to catch up with her daughter, Audrey. Then also... The big thing was there were so many people there that I haven't seen in like three, four, five years. Uh, a couple of people I haven't seen in like 10 years. It was insanely beautiful. It was heartwarming and fulfilling to go to this party, not just to hang out with Kath and Kathy and, and, and the gang, but also to see all of these lovely people and catch up with them that I haven't seen in so long. It was wonderful. Wonderful. I had a blast. All right. And then Sunday, uh, Sunday just kicked it with Rosie, man. Hung out. I went and had breakfast with Gabe Rhodes. That was great. Have not seen Gabe in a, in a couple months. I haven't seen anybody in a couple months. I feel like I'm getting back out there, gang. I went. I had two social events this weekend, so I'm really kicking ass now. Then, bad news is I went to get my teeth cleaned uh, a little over a month ago, like a month and a half ago, and uh, they checked me out and they said, "Hey, buddy, you got a cavity coming in. It's, you got a cavity. It's going. We got to. We got to get this. We got to. We got to take care of this now." So uh, I went in today, which is Monday, and I did that this morning. I have a, I have a great dentist, uh, Balcones Dental here in Austin. I've been going since like 1994, so almost 30 years I've been going to these people. 
Lisa, who works in the office there, she's been running it since I started going there. Miss, uh, Dr. Lindsay, Mr. Lindsay, Dr. Larry Lindsay is my is my dentist from there. But Balcones Dental, I've I've had some other dentists work on my stuff there. Uh, great people, fantastic. If you live in Austin, can't recommend him enough. Been going there for years, and they've always treated me really well, uh, really really well. Uh, so yeah, so that was my week, right? That was my weekend. Sorry, gorgeous weather, hanging out with Rosie a lot. Uh, uh, got to go to Kathy's birthday party. Breakfast with Gabe and then wake up and go to the dentist and have a cavity filled. Always, always a good Monday. You know, I did it like eight. I think my appointment was like at eight fifteen in the morning. I like to do that stuff early so you don't have to just sit around and stress out all day about it. I mean, it freaks me. Right. Then everybody get a little, even though my dentist is awesome. They're super nice. They're always, always just super cool. And they're, they're fans of Skyrocket, been fans of my music for a long time. The fans of Mr. Rocket Baby. That's how long I've, I've been seeing these people. And, uh, but it still sucks to go to the dentist, especially when they're like, oh, you got a cavity. You're like, dude, I brush, I floss. Like, what, what else do I need to do? Like, do I have a cleaning crew come in? Like, twice, can I come to you guys like five times a year? Is that, you know what? No one's ever said that to me, isn't it? Anyway, uh, that was my week. I hope you guys all had a good week too. Gang! I have a great, great show for you guys today. Legendary uh, rockabilly musician, blues musician, songwriter, uh, one of the top 75 female guitarists ever, according to Guitar Player Magazine, Rosie Flores is back on the show today. She returns. She was on back in like 2018, I believe, went right, right around the time when her Simple Case of the Blues album was coming out that was produced by Charlie Sexton and some other fantastic people. Uh, Rosie is, if you don't know Rosie, is like an a, like a, a a staple of the rockabilly and outlaw uh, country scene. Uh, w- when she was on originally, she she got signed back in the time of there was like a style of music where people were very very excited about it. It was called the New Traditionalists, uh, and it was like around the same time around New Sincerity, like that kind of thing. So there were these people like Dwight Yoakam, like Steve Earle, like Lucinda Williams, like Chris Isaac. Uh, the Mavericks, all these kind of people. They're kind of outlaw They were kind of doing a style of country that wasn't exactly what was happening in the late 80s in Nashville. They were kind of outside the lines. A lot of them were in, in L.A. Rosie was in L.A. She had been in a punk band. A lot of these people were being accepted by the punk audiences and rockabilly audiences because of their sort of authenticity in country music. If you go back to the the, the episode where I, that Rosie was on originally, we have a long talk about sort of that and how all those people got swept up. Anyway, That's the scene that Rosie Flores comes from. She has since gone on to release shitloads of records, and now she's got a group called Rosie Flores and the Talisman, and they've just released two singles, uh, So Sad to Watch Good Love Go Bad, which is a fantastic duet song, and uh, I've Got a Right to Cry, which I'm going to play here. These these singles are available wherever it is you stream and download music. Go to rosieflores.com to uh, get involved with Rosie, Rosie and find out when she's playing, find out about her records, uh, find out where you can hear her stuff. Great, great conversation. Great catching up with Rosie. Uh, she's doing the Outlaw Country Cruise this February. As I said, go to rosieflores.com for all of your Rosie Flores needs. Um, she also recently appeared on my friend Carl Anderson's show, uh, Outlaw, uh, sorry, the Songwriters Across Texas. She's on episode 30. You can find that on YouTube. I was also on there recently. It was great. It's That's a great show too. But hey, don't, like not listen to this show to go watch that show. Listen to this show first, right? I do have to say that Rosie, my dog, uh, is a little annoying during this because I gave she went and found a bone. Normally, I give her a Kong so she doesn't make a lot of noise when she's chewing on something because she gets a little nervous, that, you know, that no one's playing with her while we're talking. And she chews on a bone during this, so it's a little. <laughs> if you you'll tune it out every once in a while, there's like while we're talking, but it's just Rosie the dog, not Rosie the lady. I love Rosie Flores. I love hanging out with her. I love talking to her. She's a screaming guitar player, a great songwriter, fantastic singer, and a great rock on tour. Rack on tour. Sorry, rack on tour. I guess rock on tour because she's a rocker. Uh, a great rack on tour. She tells great stories. Uh, she's fun to talk to. Uh, she's hilarious. She has a great sense of humor. And uh, she's just all class and rock and roll. So without further ado, please enjoy me and Rosie Flores chatting it up right here. Let's get down.
It's in the Country that, Music Hall I of Fame s- now. I saw that photo. Yeah. How does something like that go down? Uh, how did I get in there? Well, I mean, how like do they call you one day and they're like, hey, can we have one of those guitars? No, they called me one day and said we're doing an exhibit called the Western Edge Exhibit, and it's all part of the L.A. Country Rock, and you were part of that scene, and you need to be in this. So we'd like you to come to Nashville and get interviewed. Can we get up just a little bit? And we want you to uh, bring us some pictures and mementos. I saw that. And so it was a. It took like a year, a year and a half, or almost two years before it opened. And I would go in. I would bring them stuff, and I would get interviewed. And you know, it was just like anybody who was in it. They worked. You know, like Dave Alvin was in it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, different people, um, uh, the Flying Burrito Brother people, guys that were yeah. still around, you know. It's a great exhibit. It's going to be up for three years. Yeah. So I was really proud to get. You, you should know, be. To get the uh, attention and, yeah. you know, stuff after all those years. Yeah. Lord knows I've never felt like Nashville appreciated me at all. But guess what? They do. They did. They do, and you know, you know what's funny. I on the way, I played in Houston for New Year's. Yeah, and on the way down there, I was yeah. like, "Oh, you know what? I'm gonna listen to the last time Rosie was on the show." Mm. And so I, I listen- was gonna try to do that myself, and I didn't have time. Well, listen to this. I, <laughs> you were saying then uh, your your record, uh, uh, the uh, Simple Case of the Blues, hadn't come out, but Drive, Drive, Drive had come out, right? Yeah, that was that record that came out that Single. year, yeah. I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah it was well, right before was it, it came out. Was it two years ago or three years No, ago? it was like 2018 you were on the show, and, the, oh. and then the record was coming out like in the following winter. You did oh, it in the fall. Okay. Yeah. But what I was going to say is, yeah. you were saying like, oh, I hope that I can get a hit off of this. <laughs> and you have a, a million, over a million, 200,000 plays on that song. And I, I don't know, know what constitutes song. a hit anymore. How many you know, how many times someone shazams you or I think at this day and age, um, I think it's a different way that it constitutes a hit. You know, you don't you know, you can be a virtually unknown and if you put something out there that you know, the yeah. the web loves, then it's a hit. Yeah. And you can have no name at all. You know, that's like what record companies dream of that, right? They sign these young people and they're like well, how do we get them to be popular yeah. and get the right social media you know and all that <laughs> and i you know <clears throat> some people just like they're just brilliant you know it could be a kid i saw a kid the other day playing uh what's that rhapsody you know on the piano oh bohemian rhapsody uh, yeah bohemian yeah, yeah, rhapsody yeah. and then i saw another kid that was playing uh what was it <laughs> he was playing he was playing harmonica and it was just like Eight years old, and I'm sure that guy's going to get a million hits. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I mean, though, I was going to also say that that was just on Spotify. So there's more than, oh, yeah. um, way more than yeah. probably two or three million plays on there Hopefully between Amazon so, yeah. and, and and Apple and all the weird. How do you do? You, what do you subscribe to one of those things and listen to music in a yeah, certain I way have, on your phone? I have Apple Music <laughs> okay. and I have Spotify and I have you know I'm a Prime Amazon. So me too. I have. I don't that. really use it. Though. I have the little Echo Dot, and I'll say, "Hey Alexa, play Bye-bye. whatever I want to hear." You know, whatever mood I'm in, and sometimes I like, I want to hear something, but I don't know what I want to hear, and then I'll just throw a name out there, and then it'll, I'll go, "Oh no, no, I'd rather listen to, I don't know, Brian Setzer or the Beach Boys or something, you know, right, or jazz or ambient music, just to, you know, wake up slowly with, you know." It and was, once in a while, I'll listen to myself, <laughs> just because I like my old recordings. They're, I really like good. your old recordings. I was listening to a playlist this morning. The "This Is Rosie Flores" on on oh, Spotify. Are? Yeah, oh, cool. that's a great collection. The one on Spotify. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I don't know how they put those together, but yours is. I really enjoy it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I've I have been so fortunate to record and play with the utmost amazing musicians i always have i guess i've had good taste in being attracted to them and then you know it's like a give and take thing but i've always had good taste in finding 
you know, I know who's really good and, you know, will yeah. you play with me? Or they'll say, can I play with you? And it just, it always works out. I've always had amazing people to record with. Yeah. yeah. And and the funny thing is you, you've, uh, I mean, you've always been yourself and there's been like a country rockabilly base to what you do, even on that blues record that you did with Charlie mm-hmm. and those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Rowe and Kenny Vaughn. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it's, it's interesting because I was looking back at, you know, I was thinking, you know, if anybody ever did a documentary on me, which I doubt if it ever, it, it might not ever happen, but I have so much archival stuff, but I was thinking, what story would I have to tell? And it's, it's really kind of confusing because, you know, when I, I grew up, I was, I was attracted to ballet music because, because I was taking dance class. So the, you know, Nutcracker Sweet, Swan Lake. That was my music. And then I grew into falling in love with the popular stuff that was on the radio and TV with the American Songbook, which is considered the American Songbook now. You know, Nat King Cole, oh, right. yeah, Aretha yeah. Franklin. Yeah. And not Aretha Franklin, I meant... Um, Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald, and, yeah, 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 I meant. Yeah. And Aretha came around a long later, but then I, I fell in love with that, and that became because it all you when you're growing up, all the music that you're in love with becomes part of who you are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it develops who you might end up being as an artist. Yeah, if if you're that type of kid that is in love with music, yeah, in art, like I was, and so I just I think all that stuff gets into your it gets into your blood, you know, and and certainly. By the time Rockabilly came along in the 50s, that was helping us move and shake and bebop as kids, you know. That's, I think, why that memory of Elvis and and all that, Buddy Holly, that really helped me figure out who I was. And so when that became a way to get popular again, I jumped on it. It's like, oh, I know this. I grew up with this. This This is my jam, you know. Yeah. So and I still love it, you know. It's interesting where where uh, country rockabilly and punk rock and rock all existed, kind of the scene that birthed like yeah. the Rosie Flores that we know now. You know what I mean? Was, oh, sorry. You know what I was going to uh-huh. say really fast about that playlist, Rosie. Uh-huh. It's going to sound like I'm correcting you. Yeah, Sit. there's a dog named Rosie here. <laughs> um, there's Rosie one and Rosie, Rosie two. two in the house. Uh, <laughs> it, it, when you're listening to that uh, playlist yeah. on Spotify and it goes through your, like, you know, it could go from a record from, you know, the, to the early 90s to like, you know, a new recording. Oh, by the way, the ones that you did, the latest singles, uh-huh. the uh, uh, So Sad, uh, To Watch Good Love Go Bad, and I've Got the Right to Cry. I've Got a Right, I got to, cry. A right to Cry. Those Fucking are the great. two. Uh, thank you. Those are the two um, Mule Kick singles mule kick records okay. put out and uh it's with my new band rosie flores and the talisman yeah who's in the talisman still uh, uh sunset yeah chris sunset yeah. and mike molnar on guitar okay. and michael archer on the bass and we've done a whole lot of shows in 2022 together mm-hmm. we did a um a lot of cool stuff and we i want to get them back in the studio because we have six songs in the can and I want to add, you know, three or four more and, and put out something, you know, put a whole record out. Yeah. And uh, and hopefully get some more really cool gigs down the pike with them. And, uh, you know, they're so talented. Everybody, they're all in, they all have their own careers, you know. And I'm, I'm just really excited to be playing with guys that want to play with me that are, yeah. you know, well, can find the time in their busy careers yeah. to to make time to do the talisman with Rosie, you know, so. Yeah. um, I'm really excited about it because they inspire me and it's, um, yeah, I just get really jazzed to work with them and uh, it's fun. They're all really sweet people too. Yeah, I've known Chris since he was like 13 or 14. Oh, that's right, because you knew him through that the band he was in with. Yeah, um, with Sean Crooks. With Sean Crooks. He's my godson, Sean Crooks. He's your godson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love him. I wish <laughs> I too. could be his godmother. <laughs> you probably can. I think my ex-wife was supposed to be his godmother, but they don't hang out anymore. <laughs> okay, I'll so. be his. I'll be his godmother. Uh, I love him and his wife too. Yeah, 
They're lovely, lovely people. Right. Um, okay, so back to the playlist. Okay. When you're going through this and you're going through all the different e- eras of Rosie, there are, uh, you have gotten edgier and what? you've gotten rawer in your later records. I, you know, when I, uh, it, it was like kind of before I went off into my, you know, trying to make it as a country star and get signed out of Nashville mm-hmm. and make videos for CMT and, you know, play the Grand Ole Opry. Before that, even though I was, you know, doing country and country rock and rockabilly, I hooked up, if you're hearing gnawing, it's yeah, the sorry. dog chewing on a bone. That's it's, why I gave her that Kong, sorry. It's not bothering me. I'm doing me. the best. Yeah, I'm just yeah. telling the listeners what, <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it's not that Rosie making those noises. Um, it's Rosie the dog. Uh, but anyway, I joined a, a I got into the punk rock scene in LA, and and uh, that's where I became the most edgy. I uh, was with the Screaming Sirens, right. and you know, playing you know with a heavy metal pedal, and and just trying to be as gnarly as I could. In fact, when I recorded with that band, I sort of changed my voice to make being, it rougher, make it like a little more like imperfect. I didn't want to sing so perfect yeah 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 i wanted to be uh a little more uh ravaged yeah 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 ravaged rosie's voice yeah and and probably during that time um i you know i smoked cigarettes (laughs) and you know i probably smoked pot more than i should have and a few other naughty things you know but um I think it helped get my voice have, to having a more of an edge to it. Giving it a character. Giving yeah. it more character. Yeah. Because I was like, it's almost like, you ever heard that story of Tom White screaming into a pillow so he could kind of yeah. get his voice yeah. to sound the way it does? Because if you listen to early Waits, it's, it's his voice is Prettier. pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, he, he really went for, I listened to a Terry Gross yeah. interview with him. Oh, you where, did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he, she, she was asking him about that, about that very thing. Like, oh, you were? He like, did? Were, were mean, you like a 15 year old kid that sounded like an old man? He's like, no, no, no. I made this. I worked on this I for a long time. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he um, is a, sounds a lot hoarser than I do. But, you know, I have had challenges. Um, vocally? Vocally, like back in 2019. Uh, a lot of people know that I had a mold issue to deal with. I had to move out of my house that, sucks. Uh, that I was living in across the street from where I live now. And um, I did not realize that it was getting into my lungs. Uh, there was like a problem with the the vents the, up in the attic. There was mold in the attic. And it was like raining down on me as I was sleeping. And it got all over my clothes and my guitars and and I didn't realize it till Fourth of July, two thousand nineteen, and it really had built up, you know. Yeah. So I got out of there, and then it, I spent the next uh, couple years, twenty twenty and twenty one, uh, with a, a doctor, integrative doctor, helping me get the mold out of my system and and get get rid of my brain fog. You know, I mean, I was like, not only was my voice really hoarse, but I. My brain was like, I couldn't remember the words to songs or, you know, I'd be on stage going, hey, Vic, what's the first line? And he would tell me it and I would go, what's the second line? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so I, that's, you know, that's all brain fog and crazy shit Man, I'm that sorry happens about that. to you when you get mold poisoning. You know what I was going to say about your, your voice? And uh, I think that when you don't stop, mm-hmm. like when you... What do you like mean? If, if you don't use it, you lose it. Oh, I think yeah. Tony Bennett might have said that. Like, mm. that's why I can still sing is because I just haven't stopped. Like, Cheap Trick, like that, Yeah. you know, Robin Zander. Those guys never stop touring. He just always sounds yeah. good. You sound good. You know what messed me up in, 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 in my voice? The mm-hmm. only sort of issue I've ever had uh-huh. was 2020. Where really? I didn't, I just didn't sing were... over a band very much at oh, all. Like, man. just a few times. Yeah. You can sing around your place, but you don't yeah. sing like when you're, trying to project, you know. Right. And I think that's one of the things that saved me was doing my Three's a Charm, my little live stream, because I made myself learn three songs a week and I would perform them. Yeah. And it was only three songs, but it kept my guitar playing and my voice yeah. in shape, kept my brain learning and working on music. And I think that really helped me a lot because I was able to go into 
to come out of it, I mean, and and be still kind of warmed up. I wasn't as rusty yeah. as I could have been if I'd hung around and, I don't know, painted or right, read books right. or something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, my, I mean, it took me a year, I feel like, to get it back. Yeah. Like Did to it? get back into shape. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, so you're back to performing again. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. I didn't do live streams every, I do them in, in uh, sections, like I do a month residency kind of, yeah. and then take a month off. Yeah. So I felt like I was exhausting people. But you know what's interesting is you have a, a, a worldwide fan base. You've toured everywhere. Yes, um, pretty much everywhere. I haven't been to Russia or uh, Greece. No, no, but I bet you have fans there. <laughs> I hope I do. You know, I mean, these yeah. people are tuning in, and then finally, they got to see Rosie on the regular basis. Because I, I didn't look at it like that until I had yeah. done a month, and then I stopped. Yeah. And someone wrote like, "Hey, you're you're not doing the thing. It's <laughs> Thursday." And oh, I was yeah. like, "Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to do it next month." They're like, "Shit, yeah. that's." They were looking kind of, forward to. Yeah, it. I'm sitting around in my underwear all day, like working. <laughs> I just want to, you know, rock out with Johnny on the TV for a little while, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But the but the joy, I bet. I mean, did you get a lot of feedback during that time? Like, thank you and. Oh, I got such good feedback, and uh, I I got really, really good tips that kept yeah. me going. And um, that I, I'm <laughs> going to turn part, my phone off. Sorry. That part of it. That part of it. Like <laughs> the first one I did, uh-huh. I did it in like March. Like it was pretty early. Like like maybe the the last week of March. Like just a couple weeks after lockdown. Mm-hmm. I made so much money on that first one that I was like, why have I been leaving and driving to other places? I was making more staying home than I was when I was playing the gallery and, you know, that's my it, happy hour at Sea yeah. Boys. And, but, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's beautiful that people were listening and appreciating and saying, I'm going to help support this person. And if, if it was five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, you know. It, There's you know, really cool people was, that pop in every had, once in a while and throw you so a couple many hundred. Fans yeah, that it added up, and so I was like, "Oh man, this is this is really great. I don't have to, you know, worry so hard um, about how I'm going to eat and pay my rent." And um, but when I what I found was there would be little notes with people's uh, Venmo or PayPal saying, "We look so forward to this. Yeah. You're helping us exactly get through the week." Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm doing this. I'm it's a service. It's this. an actual service that we provide people. That yeah. Sometimes we lose touch of that. But during that pandemic, yeah. I really connected with the fact that like, wow, some stuff I've done just really means so much to some people. Yeah, isn't that, that a great it's, feeling? Yeah, it's you know, amazing. It's like, oh my God, it's, it's rewarding. And yeah. It gives you, it's encouragement to keep doing it and... And just put a smile on your face, you know. And at the end of that year, I ended up, I went on one of the, the free card companies that you can send people. Because I had everybody's email. Oh, right. Yeah, and yeah. I oh, sent, cool. I sent everybody, like, thank you cards. And oh, that's really wrote nice. a little special note to each person. That yeah. As many as I could find that were, were on. And I had, you know, I spent two weeks doing that, just thanking people. Because that's how much it meant to me you know yeah. that they were keeping me going yeah so that was that was okay to get through but uh, that was a crazy time 23 i can't believe. I, I can't either like i cannot believe that i can't believe yeah three years have gone by yeah dang <laughs> three years what <laughs> I'm three years older, damn it. <laughs> I know. We all are. It's kind of like we yeah. lost it. We lost a whole thing there. Yeah. Um, okay, so there was some other stuff I want. I, you, you you went on stage with Chris Isaac. I, w- I went through your, your uh-huh. Instagram and stuff and oh, saw you and Patricia Vaughn. We went. were on stage with him last year, but that we just saw him remember. this year, though. Okay. But he didn't bring us on stage, but... We um, were friends with them. and But you, 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 I mean, he came from that world of the... Of the rockabilly scene, of the, yeah. Of the, yeah well, the when I was living in California and I was doing a lot of opening shows at different venues as a solo acoustic act way before I ever got signed, Yeah. Chris and the Silvertones were one of the bands I opened for back when Jimmy Wilsey was playing guitar in the band, you know, the guy that wrote... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Yeah. Um, 
they you they used to jump on stage with me and and uh back me up on a couple songs and so I go way back with him and I dated uh before he had Roly in the band I dated Roly we were in a band together his bass player oh and uh after Roly and I started uh we moved to Santa Cruz together and uh he ended up staying in the Bay Area and, and Chris found him yeah such a great bass player you know and songwriter, yeah. You know? He wrote yeah. "Killing the Blues," which is an amazing hit song. And um, so, anyway, yeah, I go way back with them, and uh, it's it's really cool that Chris, you know, he just adores Patricia Vaughn, and and she, he'll get her up to play, you know, castanets, castanets yeah, yeah. and he'll get me up to play guitar, you know. Yeah. And he, it's it's amazing that that um, they spread the love around like that, and. We yeah. appreciate them, and they appreciate us. And I like that Christmas song, that Santa Claus Revenge. What was it called? Sorry, I don't, the, uh, the one that Patricia yeah, and yeah, I yeah, yeah, wrote. Yeah. It's called uh, Santa's on a Rampage. Santa's on a Rampage. Yeah, because he wants to <laughs> finish dealing out the toys so he can go party, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, it's so. It's so. Uh, you're a few years older than me, mm-hmm. and I. I. I've spent like the last like 15 years just trying to figure out how to stay engaged and not like get off of, of, of new things and not, you know what I mean? Like how people settle and they just get old. Like, uh, Alejandro is a great example of like, you are a great example of it as well. Like somebody who stays engaged and is constantly challenging themselves in some way, making new shit, putting out new albums. Oh, he's, he's like a child in his, uh, Wonderment and growth as an artist. Yeah, you know, he. I mean, you know who else? Kimmy Rhodes is like that. And Kimmy's, yeah, I, she doesn't stop. I love Kimmy Rhodes. I've, yeah, I've gotten really close to her since the pandemic. Really, and she's she's become such a great friend, and uh, she's really helped me out in many ways. Um, but she's really inspiring, and um, yeah, you don't. Some of us don't retire; we just keep going. I don't think we need to. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I think that would be the end of you know what I mean. I don't think yeah. I don't think you. you I, I, what is what is retirement? You just you you don't create anymore. Or what? Well, we're I not mean, plumbers. We don't we don't dread going to a job. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. why would we want to stop doing it just because? Yeah. How can you stop being creative? You know why? I, why yeah. would you put a lid on that? You know. So most of the the people that I know that are my age that I grew up with. Uh, they're still recording and writing songs, and uh, you know, I'm. I started learning piano um, in 2020, and I can play Imagine, and I can play some Beatles songs, and you know, I can write again on the piano. See, I've got I've got the McCartney. You I got know, you got to have I, those, man. I was like, <laughs> I'm looking at your piano, piano going. I want a real piano in my house so bad oh you and need once one you learn you should have one yeah i'm i've been looking there's nothing more fun than than that sound and making that I sound know. i feel sorry for my neighbors sometimes but and <laughs> mine's just an electric yamaha but i you know i got it years ago and it took me a long time my friend deb deborah peters got me started and gave me my first lesson who's that deborah peters? You know, deborah peters who's uh, an amazing accordion player okay and uh, she moved away but she's used to play the broken spoke all the time played like zydeco and country and stuff nice um yeah she's been in she's a you know old austin she's been here a long time but um anyway i kept going with it and i learned it and um have you written on it you know it's funny the first song i wrote on it i recorded with the david lindley band el rio x oh yeah we talked about them last yeah time. a song called oh heartache and really i i wrote it on the piano before I ever really learned how to play just by feeling the chords out. But isn't that fun? Yeah. Like I'm always trying to find new things that I don't, I've started writing, doing like writing with the drum machine and then just playing bass. Cause if not, I'm going to strum a G chord. That's my, that's you know what the I mean? other instrument. I bought a bass and a little bass amp. Yeah. Cause I want to start rocking out on the bass. I want to play like Paul McCartney. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's time to play along to Beatles records. So you know, I, I'm just like a kid in a candy store. You know, and in fact, I bought myself a little ukulele for Christmas. You know, and it's just—it's—it's oh, it's so funny because I think like we're all kid. alike. There, I've got my my ukulele on the wall. I got oh, the bass. Yeah. You got the piano. 
Also, like yeah. Omnicords and stuff like that, like just weird toys, like the Casio and stuff like that. I love yeah. those for writing. Yeah, it's just, it's fun to make music. And, um, you know, I'm still single. So I think I kind of like being single because I can, I can have more time to be creative, you know, and I, I, I just don't know what I would do if I had to take care of somebody or I don't know if I should call it take care of somebody, but to um, give my time to share my time with somebody. Although I guess if you're in love, you really want to, but yeah, I haven't been in love in so long. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't really feel like anything's missing from my life. That's great. Except that I just want to record more. That's what's missing. Yeah. You know, and, and I can make that happen and I can keep writing. And so, you know, I'm going to keep doing it as long as my health, if I can stay away from getting COVID. I mean, dang, yeah, yeah. I had it twice this year and, you know, but. Your, do your hands ever get funky? Like no. your joints or anything? No. Nope. My knees do. Your knees do? But that's probably from jumping off a lot of stages and, you know, being a little more of it. Because I used to be a dancer and I did a lot of jumping. And yeah. So when you get older, if, if, you did, if you did a lot of that to your knees when you were younger, then you're going to I think I just I did enough, but <laughs> like not, not too much to hurt myself. I did stuff that looked really dramatic. Like, I'm really glad I never jumped on a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. My aunt and I, I woke up yesterday and I decided to go ahead and stay in Houston. My grandma, I told you, is old and she was, oh, she was yeah. sad that I was leaving. So I was like, well, I'll just yeah. come back. Su- I came back super early this morning. Oh. But um, my aunt and I, I was like, oh, I've got this lady, Rosie Flores, coming on. You want to watch some videos? So we got on mm-hmm. YouTube. Oh, really? And my aunt and I were cool. watching. And um, that video, uh, the one where you're dancing with, uh, with Patricia Vaughn. Santa's on a rampage oh, where Santa's you guys are dancing rampage. in there. Yeah. The way that you were moving physically, my aunt, my other aunt is your age. Ah. And she's a lot stiffer. And uh-huh. like, they both were like, wait, how old is she? And I was like, oh. <laughs> I told one of them, I was like, she's, one of them, she's older than you. And the other one, I'm like, she's your age. And they were like, what, like, what does she do? And I was like, I think, I think it's making music and staying creative and you know you don't stop moving well yeah that's right there has to be some stuff to keep you able to bend over and you know touch your toes and stuff oh yeah i mean i i can sit in second and i could still do a lot of ballet stretching and uh i do a lot of ballet stretches um on a bar and uh the only thing i i wish i could do that i can't do that i used to do is run yeah, because it's just harder on my knees. But, Mine too. You know, I I think it's really important when when you hit fifty to keep you know stretching and yeah. and doing Pilates and um, you know keeping keeping yourself limber. And I, if it wasn't for all the dance classes I had when I was young, I probably wouldn't be addicted to moving. Yeah, you know, I, I it's like I'm addicted to moving because of dance. You know. Yeah. I understand that. I have that do, from doing yeah. sports growing up, playing sports. Yeah. Like I do have to do something every day that's some kind of physical mm-hmm. thing. It helps you have a dog you can walk. Oh, yeah. She keeps me going. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so let me ask you this, because you were saying earlier, like, I'm single. You're glad you're single. And then I was thinking uh, today when I was driving up here, I was, I was wondering, because there's not a lot of, like, uh, Mexican lady to you. Yeah, I'm Cuban. My grandma should be like that whole weekend, you know, all day yesterday. She's like, you yeah. really, you don't have anyone? Like, yeah. are you like, okay? And I'm like, yes, it's all right, man. And you're like, single too. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, it's all right. Like, but they don't see it as all right. So yeah. I'm wondering when you mm-hmm. got started out mm-hmm. doing this, mm-hmm. was your like mom and your abuela, like how <laughs> were they preocupado? Well, my, <laughs> my grandparents died when I, so you know, when I was like pretty young. So okay. I didn't really get a lot of advice from them. And they spoke Spanish only. So okay. I had a hard time getting advice from them, unfortunately. Um, but my mom used to say, don't get married young. That's when the fun stops. My mom would tell me that, <laughs> you know. Who so got married young too, right? <laughs> one person saying, you really need to find somebody. I've never, you know. Because um, that's part of the culture of Hispanic culture of latin culture like i guess it is but my my parents were they were different i had my parents were artistic um 
they progressive had, it, more progressive yeah. thank you and my dad was i think i told you this on the last podcast that my dad went out and bought, signed for five thousand dollars worth of musical gear yeah yeah for my band yeah and so they were they were like you know move to la we'll we'll send you a couple hundred bucks a month to help you pay your rent you know if you need food money you know go there and and you know work on your music go to la get signed do what you need to do and um never once were they i mean they were happy when i dated and almost got married a few times they were happy they were you know uh they wanted me to be happy was the main thing yeah and when it wouldn't work out and um and I would be single again and sad. My mom would go, well, they weren't good enough for you. Or right. good riddance to bad riddance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, or, yeah. And it's like, get over it, you know. It's yeah. like, somebody else will come along. Yeah. And, you know. Um, you know, I, w- whenever I can, like, shake somebody off that hurt me yeah, or yeah. didn't love me as much as I loved them, whenever I can, like, totally shake it off, yeah. I just feel reborn again. And it's it's like I feel like energized from, you know, the <laughs> songs I wrote through it and yeah, what I yeah. learned from the relationship. Do you, and do you think in any way? <laughs> what, what's that? Do you think in any way? And I've I've oh. I've had conversations with my yeah. own therapist about yeah. this thing. Is that you can be self destructive just for the for the for the material. <laughs> Do I think in any way like, that have I you ever, do that? Like, have you ever been in a fight with someone in the middle of it? You're like, Jesus, that was a great thing. Is there a way to write this down? Like, while she's, you know, we're still fighting. Yeah. I mean, I always do definitely express myself because songs for me, songwriting is therapy. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I've been really trying to pull song. You know, I started a couple of days ago going, you know, you've got to start writing every morning again. Yeah, yeah. And the other day when I was walking around on New Year's uh, Eve day, uh, the 31st, I was like, I just felt all this creativity coming and there was like the leaves were blowing off the trees and I just felt like there was creativity in the air and I went in and I started working on this painting that I'm working on and I went like, you got to write, you know, find the time, you know, and I I ended up being busy and I, I don't know, uh, I thought to myself I was going to go to a party, and I was just getting over being sick anyway. So I thought, now nah, I can't go to the party. I'm, I'm still coughing, you know. But I think that sometimes I, I wish that I could fall in love so that I could, just what you said, have some create, you know, and have it not work out so that I could have some creativity again. Because I've written some darn good love songs, you know. I, yeah. The good to me anyway. Yeah. It seems like those ones of longing fit the music that you play a lot better. There's um, a guy that, if you go on my Facebook page, there's a guy named Earl Reinhalter who's been putting out some songs, uh, some live uh, videos from when I lived in L.A. Oh, really? And and he's reminding, you know, he has some songs that I've never recorded that I wrote back then and I'm like holy crap I got to record these songs and a lot of them were written through heartache you know yeah and I was like those are really great songs oh so he has he has songs that were never recorded or released oh man he sends them to me and I'm like oh my god that he goes why didn't you ever record that one I'm like I know you know so I think some of those songs I'm going to take in the studio with the talisman and put them down because they're great songs. Yeah. So, um, are you playing? Funny, though. Are you playing with the Talisman? You're doing a show like in in at Belly Up? No. Um, I'm yes? going to California. I'll have um, well, when I'm at the Belly Up, I'm going to be a special guest, which I'll only do maybe three songs with the Beat Farmers because they're mm. doing a Beat Farmers reunion. Jerry Rainey and Joey Harris and I uh, remember them. Uh, I mean, I don't know who, oh, uh, you know, uh, wait a minute, who's going to, no, Peter Case was going to be the special guest, but he's not on it now. But uh, Raleigh, Love, and um, who else is in the band? It's just a great band. And um, so they do that reunion, I think, about once a year. And we just got off the cruise ship together. 
And we were on a couple of cruise ships together, actually, the Outlaw Country cruise ship. Yeah. And they were on the West Coast one. The West Coast one we did in November was incredible. Yeah. Because it had Los Lobos, Social Distortion. Oh, wow. wow. Dave Alvin. um, Yeah, the Beat Farmers. and. You're about to do another one of those in February, right? (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to do... That was like the West Coast one. Yeah. This one's more like the Outlaw Country, the one that has more country yeah know, yeah like carling carter and yeah uh old 97s and the waco brothers jesse dayton jesse dayton used to ha- used to have dale watson he's not doing them anymore for some odd reason is is he the Ameripolit- oh, i love your kiss dolls oh thank you yeah they <laughs> were you. in fact they were on the cruise ship the same one we got off of they were coming on? They were coming off <laughs> of a two-week, and I got to stay in Paul Stanley's. Suite. No way. Yeah, so it had all good vibes in there. That's nice. I like yeah. that guy. I, he, I made me, he made me sob during the pandemic. He, I love your, pick your little Pez collection and all that. People give them to me. Tell me a good kiss story. I'll, I'll ask you now. What's a good kiss story? Okay, well, I never met them. Oh, you didn't? No, my wife went to dinner with Gene Simmons one time. And I was invited to go, but I, I, I don't like him. And I thought, like, I can't go. And how, like, it was Mark, you know Mark Addison? I'm, I know. Producer he got, he, he came and, and, and he was doing something with Matt, uh, Alejandro's son in law, Matt. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he was, he was doing a film with him or? No, they did a song together. Oh, they did a song together. Okay. Or he did one of his songs. And then he ended up covering one of Addison's songs. So they oh. were working at Addison's studio. Really? Addison hired my ex-wife to come in and do photos. Mm. And then when it was time for dinner, they were like, Jesus, Johnny's a huge Kiss fan. Why don't you invite him? And I was like, it's just Gene. It's like, that's going to be so bad. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's not a good Kiss story. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the good no. Kiss story I have was in the summer of 2020, um, obviously we're all watching weird stuff on YouTube. All of us are doing weird things on YouTube or whatever. And Paul Stanley uh, has a soul band. <laughs> Does he? Yeah, he's got like a full-on like Motown kind of band that he sings in. Nice. And he did uh, uh, Ooh Baby Baby on the app acapella where you could record Ooh, everyone by themselves. Ooh Baby yeah. Baby. And he did this speech before it about how tense everything was in the world and mm-hmm. how we just kind of needed to love each other. Mm-hmm. And the song started and I was just sitting on my bed and I just started sobbing. Did you? And the oh. most amazing one. You know what I mean? Where it yeah. feels so good. You're like, oh God. Afterwards, I was like, yeah. that was amazing. A good song will make yeah. you cry. It'll yeah. bring out emotions. Even yeah. Paul Stanley doing Smokey Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I did that song on, on one of my live streams. You did? Yeah. Uh, I, do you still, I, do, you, do you do any live streams? I, no. I don't. I, it's funny. I woke up this morning thinking, I feel like doing a live stream right yeah. now. Like, I just kind of felt like doing it, yeah. you know, and I was looking at my couch where I used to sit and I was like, I wonder if I should just do one, you know, Yeah. And just, you know, maybe do one a month or one every three months. I don't know. It just, it was fun. Yeah. It really was. I know some people that still do them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, yeah, I mean, I've seen a few people doing them. Yeah. Uh, and it's really fun to, to look at. You know, and you're scrolling on your phone, and you're like, "Oh, somebody's live." Yeah, I'm gonna sit here and watch this. Yeah, for a yeah. While. Oh, I used to do. I had a couple people like uh, Miles Zuniga. Yeah, I watched his every Tuesday. Joey was doing one from the Bell Furies. Oh, really? A day or two ago, was it yesterday or the day before? Yeah, so I might do that. I might do that. I did one last year. Remember when in January or beginning of February it got if we had a snow 21? day. Uh-huh. No, 2022. 20, oh, 22. Oh, yeah. Like there was one cool. day when it snowed and it, yeah. they, everything, I did one that day. Like oh, the day did. before I saw the weather report and I was like, okay, I'm going live tomorrow. And I did it. It was ah, fun. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty snowy few yeah. days there. Were you here during the, the snowpocalypse yeah, thing? I was, and, and fortunately I had heat and power and oh. I only lost water for, I think, a day or two. The pipes froze and everything I, went out here. Gabe Rhodes, oh. Gabe Rhodes, Scott Garber came and got me oh, like on the street because you, <laughs> you couldn't. I couldn't get out of here because those the oh, the, yeah. the 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 things are all slanted and it was all ice. Yeah. So I was like, I can't because Gabe was like, "Come over, I have power," and I was like, "Okay." Yeah. So it How took me like a there? day. 
it's like Scott Garber's out running some errands. He'll come get you. He's from Minnesota. <laughs> well, he can drive in the snow then. But yeah. m- my thing was like, I didn't want to leave the house because I had steps and I figured I would slip and fall. Yeah. You know, and at my age, you can't slip and fall. No, no, that's, you know? <laughs> that's... So I just, but luckily I, I, my power only went out for maybe four hours and came back in and I was, I was blessed. Yeah. You know, I had food and yeah. it was okay. You know, I went shopping for the whole thing and all that food went bad. It's a bummer. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought I was, I was so excited. You can see on my Instagram post, like even the morning of that Monday that the yeah. power went out, I'm like, look at this glorious day. It's going to yeah. be great. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor, 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 uh, Gene Taylor from the blasters. He died. Oh no, really? From the cold. He yeah. did? Yeah, he. I believe he died from um, what's the proper name? Hypothermia. For hypothermia. One of my favorite piano boogie woogie piano players uh, in the world, and I was like, "Damn, I was gonna try to take piano lessons from him because he had a a thing he would teach yeah. online and stuff." See, uh, remember Gabe's son that got up and played Louis. I was taking that, lessons from him. You were Louis. taking lessons from Louis. Yeah, I took some lessons. How He's cool the one is that? that? Helped me get through uh, "Imagine" by John Lennon. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Kimmy dur- turned me on to him. Oh yeah, he's the coolest man. During so the cool. uh, during the when I was there during the snowpocalypse, he would do a couple like a couple hours on the piano every day doing jazz stuff. Like just it was oh. so great. I'd uh, go take a nap upstairs, leave the door open, listen to him play. Oh, you mean he I, was. Oh, when you were staying when I was at Gabe's there. house, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, during the snow apocalypse, it was oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. yeah, very talented. Yeah, I love that family. They've me too. They've done nothing but given me great opportunities and really, uh, it's nice when do you, there's something yeah. about Kimmy. Kimmy Rhodes instills a, a sense of confidence in you when she has a belief in you, right? I I would say she, so, and and she's great power. Just em- emulates love Mm -hmm. you know and she she's happy she's i think part of how she can do that is that she you know when she was young i mean she came from a great family and you know then you know early on she met gracie Mm -hmm. and you know like early on you know she got her uh you know, he turned her on to Willie Nelson mm-hmm. and Willie and Waylon started cutting her songs when she was like a kid. I and, know. you know, I think she's always just had a, a wonderful streak of love and luck and encouragement around her. So all that that she absorbed, she I feel like she can give that out. Yeah. Like it's just like, boom, you know. Yeah. And uh, she's just real fun to be around. Yeah. Who inspires you now? I mean, Kimmy, people like, who else? Sure, she does. Um, you know, I get inspired by uh, young and old, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking over at that Paul McCartney book he, on your piano. He inspires me, yeah. you know, when I see how he's still doing, you know, as an older guy who's older than me, you know, is still like a kid reinventing himself yeah. and writing and you know i go see him plays on stage for three hours and yeah you know i, I relate with him yeah, yeah you know yeah and then i'll see somebody like kelly mcquee who's young and yeah and and you know i gave her a few guitar lessons you know trying to get her to go out of the box a little but man her voice her writing her soul i'm i'm inspired by her yeah um, She's such a kind. She's a sweet soulful person. human being. Also, what a great singer and writer, and just oh, like I love her really so much. Good. Um, Bonnie Whitmore, uh, also oh, another man, one. She's, yeah, who's young? That's such a soul yeah. mate. And um, let's see who else. Those um, are my bros. As far as men go, um, yeah. I mean, just really, you know, seeing people like Colin Gilmore. Gilmore. Yeah. You know, Gabe. Gabe's Rhodes. amazing. Um, you know, I know I'm going to go to sleep at night. And say, oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know, the guys in my band. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I in my jazz group, I play with Jim Stringer, who's a phenomenal uh, guitar player, not, not only as a jazz player, but country. He can play country. He can play uh, Blue anything. Moon Quartet. Yeah, the Blue Moon Jazz Quartet. Jazz Quartet. I threw sorry. the jazz in there so they'll know. So they'll know. That we're playing that yeah. type of 
music um because we have the upright bass player uh josh flowers has been working with us he's good and uh dan walton has been our uh piano player as of late t jared bond was our piano guy for the first seven eight years uh, danny levin isn't uh, danny levin played with us one time last oh. tuesday uh. and he was incredible <laughs> to work with and so we want to bring him back again i know? love danny levin me too. You know, he is the king of the backhanded compliments. Oh, I didn't know that. He does. One time I, I did <laughs> something in some band and I wasn't the front man. Uh-huh. And he goes, this is much better suited for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's totally backhanded. <laughs> he has a really great sense of humor. Yeah, I, I think, think he was, I yeah. Love, I love funny people. Yeah. Um, you know, Jim Stringer's funny. Yeah. Um, Chris Sensat's funny. Um, yeah. I mean, really, uh, if it wasn't for, you know, some of the people I've worked with through the years that had a great sense of humor, I don't know how I could have just stayed in this craziness, this craziness of touring. And, yeah. you know, you get on, you get, you get on these long dates and if you can't laugh about stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, that's exactly right. It's what really keeps me going. And oh. I've got a great sense of humor and I, I'm always, you know, the first one to try to find the humor and stuff. And sometimes I get in trouble for it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah no, like and, that's not funny, Rosie, yeah, yeah. you know. I'm like, well, I'm, you know, so you got to look at the other side. Of I it. feel like Todd Wilson and I should three-way cause Because sometimes Todd and I have the worst, like, just like, if anyone heard this conversation that we're having <laughs> and the things that we're saying, yes. we would be put away. I have that with Todd Wilson <laughs> You do, everybody. Well. And maybe it's him. Yeah, he, he's a nut. Did you see this? He painted us for my birthday one year. I was looking at that and <laughs> loving it. I didn't realize that it was you and him. He's, I love that he's guy. He's very creative. Yeah. I want him to do one of me and him now that I've seen that. Oh, he would do it in a second. Yeah. He's such a good artist. He's a great, great artist. Great photographer. He's a guy that's always been inspiring to Look me. He's a great friend. art little I know. pictures. Of, is, it does they seem weird. You? Well, yeah, those are me. One of them, I like that Done one where I look like I'm in the Beatles. Or? Yeah. You know, Sila Misra did that one that's pretty realistic. Watercolor one. Yeah. So who's the name? Sila Misra. I, you know her? I don't know. Her. John Green. She's married to John Green, the great drama guy. I don't know John hmm. Green. I've, I've yet to uh, come across. Oh, you would like that? I'm, I'm working on a self portrait because somebody's already paid me to do it. They want oh, really? a self portrait. It's hard. It is hard. It's hard to do yourself. Yeah. Like, you just don't. You have to really, yeah, like do it from a photograph. Because if I do it from a mirror, you know, you see different things. I always do them from memory when I do myself. Oh, you do from memory. <laughs> I make myself look a way cooler than I actually <laughs> look. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, man, what are you going to do? Oh, here's a question yeah. I had about funny people okay. and Chris Isaac oh, in yeah. the early '90s or late '80s. He's when, funny. Yes, this is what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is he so funny because? They hosted a segment on VH1 and like the band oh, was yeah, playing yeah. and you know, they'd come back from commercial and play and then he'd say some crazy shit yeah. and they'd go to video and then they come, you know, whatever kind of weird gig that was for them. But uh, Are you talking about the TV show they were doing in Vancouver? No, no, no. There was a oh. VH1, like they were the special okay. uh, guest VJs for oh, the Chris Isaac that. and the Silvertones. Right. But he that. was so funny and it didn't seem like they were writers. Or anything like they were just yeah. they were saying this stuff to each other about videos and music that was hilarious. Oh yeah, uh, uh, his drummer is super funny too, Kenny. He's he's super funny. It might have been those two going I back. I think they're probably going back and forth. And Roly's funny too, the, the bass player. I mean, we had we've always had a bunch of yucks hanging out together. So yeah, I, I just love being around people that try to find the humor and like to twist things around and, yeah. you know, I think one of the, you know, when you go see Chris Isaac, you're going to get some stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. I've never seen him live. Oh, you, you would love him. He, At one point I was against him cause he was so good looking. You were against him. I'm <laughs> I don't against like that, that guy. person because he's too, too, too beautiful for this world. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be that good and that beautiful. He's pretty, Choose one. He's pretty gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And then funny too. It's like, what, what else do you have? Yeah. <laughs> like, he play guitar. He can write. Oh, I hate he that good guy. Taste in Friends. He's yeah. He's been in some cool fashion, movies. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He wasn't he in that Jerry Lee 
I think he was in that movie, and he was in uh, Married to the Mob. Uh, did he play Eddie Cochran in that movie? I think on the in the yes, yeah, he, I think he's so. just got a great face. No, no, no. Uh, Brian no. Setzer played Eddie Cochran. Oh yeah, Brian Setzer played Eddie Cochran. And Marshall Crenshaw played Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly. But I, I'm pretty what did sure. Chris play. Maybe he wasn't in it. Let's uh, call him up. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Chris Isaac. Um, I saw you did the songwriters across Texas. I watched some. Of it. I like I like it when you play oh. acoustic guitar and sing. You that was one of the things that my aunt and I were watching well, thank yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I got. I'm so fortunate. Um, when I was at the pilgrimage festival, um, I just I just did a post today of the things I was thankful for yeah. for 2020. I don't know if you saw it, but um, when I played the pilgrimage festival, they I was hanging out on this little couch with Kenny Vaughn, Chris Scruggs, and Chris Sensat. We were there taking a break and having a taco and a beer and Gibson tent was right next door and they brought over these guitars and said would you guys play some music sure and so i played this like it's called a g rider and it's an acoustic guitar i don't think i had it when i did that songwriters across texas okay but it's got a hole on the top of the side that faces uh-huh. you oh so, so that you can the, hear when it you more? play the acoustic guitar you can hear it really loud oh wow so it's that's got cool two holes, and if you want to make it louder down there it's say you're recording or something and you want all the sound you can there's like a little Ding. plastic cover you can co- cover it back up wow you know? but um that's the guitar that i've been playing a lot um because it's the action on it well i had my friend jason swedberg yeah he worked on he Did built me that guitar. Oh, is that a Swedberg? Yep, that's a JSL, J. Scott Luther. Really. He's so good. He and, is. Um, so I'd, I've had him work on a lot of my stuff, and I'm going to take my ukulele to him in the next day or so. But um, Oh, you were just on Penny's show. I was going to be on Penny's show, oh. but that I was still sick with oh, that okay. Okay. RSV or whatever it was yeah. that I got over Christmas, yeah. but Or after Christmas, I got it. Um, but yeah, I... Thank you for saying that. I, because I, I love playing the acoustic, and I wanna, I wanna do more acoustic shows, and I want, I'd like to do more solo acoustic shows, um, just so I can try out a bunch of new material. And it's, it's just good when when you put all of that on yourself to, to be the whole sound, and you know, like put a, a tambo thing on your foot and keep the beat and. Yeah. You know, like do the solos and do keep it going. That's what I liked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a challenge, and I used to do it when I was young. That's, you know, I mean, I used to open for all kinds of people as a solo, and when I was in my twenties, yeah, I made a living that way. You can, even still. Yeah. I mean, maybe not opening for people as much, but it makes it easier to go on tour and shit. That's for sure. Yeah, but I was. I was up, you know, going up and down the California coast, opening for, you know, David Lindley, Elvin Bishop, um, you know, uh, Rick Danko, and uh, a ton of people. Is Elvin, Elvin Bishop fool around and fell in love? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wasn't the singer. No, on that's it, but uh, Mickey he Thomas, wrote it, right? Though, yeah, but they took me on the road, and and Lindley's band took me on. You know, I was I was lucky because I was good enough to keep the audiences entertained and they were like oh we like this girl she's easy on easy off and you know yeah. we'll bring her up to sit in with us and she's you know she's got something going she surely doesn't have a name yet but she's good to work with so yeah. they took me on the road and so i learned a lot when my aunt and i were watching that youtube stuff yesterday there's a lot of stuff of you sitting in with people there was a few videos of you sitting in with the mavericks that were really good that i really Oh, was that must have been on the uh, cruise ship? It wasn't very long ago. Yeah, that was on the cruise ship. They invited me to it, when they're on the ship, which actually they're on the February cruise ship. Um, I hope they'll invite me up. They'll do a night where they'll have special guests. Up yeah. And, so that was really. It's a Cuban fun. guy. What's that? He's a Cuban guy. Rome. Yeah. He's, yeah. Well, yeah, he's. Uh, I don't know if he was born there, but he's I think he, I think he's I think he's like me, like the parents were born because he went to the yeah. I, like because he, he was from uh, Miami. Miami, yeah, yeah. He's from Miami. He went to Columbus High School, which Miami. is where I went for one year. Oh, but really? All three of my brothers I went there. I didn't know you were from Florida. Yeah, um, that's that's where a lot of the Cubans come from now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But my parents were both born there, but I was born here. El Cubano. So, El Cubano. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Good stuff. 
I'm my favorite band, by the way. I love them. The Mavericks. Yes. Really? I, Did you I, go see them this weekend or this last week? I, Weren't they in Green Hall for like a month or something? Yeah, Not a month, but like for three days or something. I didn't get to see them. I was, I was uh, either playing or something. Uh, but I will see them a lot on the cruise, and I knew that I was going to get to see them on the cruise. Ship, yeah. So I'll, they everybody plays three times. Oh, that's what I was just about to ask. And then you can hang out with them and. So everybody plays three times, like, are they three different kinds of gigs? Like, you play on the Lido yeah. deck, and then on the yeah. theater part, and then... Yeah, a, on the yeah. pool deck, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. Um, what they want you to do is to try to change up your show, your shows a little bit, mm-hmm. so that people, when they see you, they'll get it, they're not going to see the same right, show, right. so you can have different people sit in, like, I'm going to have John Langford sit in with me on oh, one cool. of my shows, and do a bunch of songs from the record we made together, yeah. and then... One will be like more maybe honky tonk, and the other will be more rock and blues. So, um, you know, and have different people sit in with me. Um, but yeah, the cruise ships are good because you get to see other people play. Like I can see Lucinda play, yeah, um, once or twice, and and also they have uh, theme nights where I think they're going to do a Doug Psalm tribute this time. Oh, too. cool! So everybody gets up and sings Doug Psalm, or last time we did. Um, we did a tribute to Rodney Crowell oh, on nice. one of them, and I had to sing in front of Rodney Crowell, which is like, oh my god, I'm so scared. <laughs> He's one of my heroes. Um, and uh, but I, I also have to mention my other favorite band since I did say the Mavericks, Marty Stewart and the oh, Fabulous yeah. Superlatives are up there, you know, the top three bands. Who's you know. isn't there a Scruggs guy? Yeah. Uh, that Chris Scruggs. And I saw him play. On bass, but he's also a guitar player and a steel amazing. guitar player. Like amazing guitar amazing. player. Amazing. Yeah, he just made, their band just made it into the Musicians Hall of Fame. The Superlatives? Uh-huh. Yeah, they deserve that. Yeah. Marty's a, that guy, man. The Harry on the drums and Kenny on the guitar and Chris on the bass. I mean, that's all they need. Yeah. Um, is those four guys. I think sometimes he brings, does he have a piano player sometimes? I don't know. I don't. I've, I think it's just the four of them, isn't it? That's another thing. My ex, my ex wife worked with him. Like she directed a video for him and mm. did a photo shoot. And so there was a couple. Have I met your ex wife? Might have. Tracy Gowdy. She's got blonde hair. I think I might have met her. I haven't had the pleasure of working with her yet, but she's worked with. Uh, she did a lot of stuff with like Patty Griffin. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's I, one talented girl. Yeah. Such an inspiring songwriter. Yeah, totally. Um, oh yeah. Do you? Who all do you write with? I know there's one person that you write a lot with. Uh, Rachel Gladstone yes. in Nashville. I used to write a lot with Pat Gallagher uh, when I was living in LA and and in Nashville. Um, you know, I'm trying to branch out to find more people to write with. Um, what about Kelly Mickwe? I would love to write. We've talked about it. Um, I haven't found anybody that I. I have actually started writing with. Mm. I wrote a little bit with um, Bonnie Montgomery, uh-huh. who I produced a couple, couple of tracks. I, I saw for. you guys did like there was three songs that were credited yeah, to both of you. We co-wrote a couple of things in there. Um, she's an amazing singer and writer. Um, yeah, I'm open. If anybody out there wants to call me up and co-write with me, I'm looking for somebody in town to. Yeah you know, right with, so. That's always a good, like, to it. whenever you have that feeling of like, I just need some new, somebody that's going to take me, just open a new door for me to walk through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just I'm supposed to write with Kimmy. We we keep talking about it. She's good. She's great. We've written a couple of really good songs. You have? Yeah. Yeah. I got to play on that. a record of hers. Like, it's weird. I, I, I did a podcast with her. I didn't know her. Yeah. And she was, it was so funny because she was like, oh, well, come out to my house. And I was like, okay, but normally I do it at my house. She's like, no, come out to my house and I'll record it. Yeah, but she's like, got a studio there. Right. So she recorded it. <laughs> and uh, and while I was there, when I was leaving, she was like, do you write songs? And I was like, yeah. So she's like, oh, I'd love to hear what you do. So oh. I sent her a couple songs when I got home. Uh-huh. And the next day she's like, oh, I was talking to Gabe. And we're going to cut this song, and we want you to play on it. And I was like, what are you even talking about? And she's like, I'm going to record one of your songs. I was like, what? So I ended up getting to play on the whole record, and it was nice. really fun. Yeah, yeah. Dang, she gave me a day cool. to just go in there and, like, just to go in there with Gabe and yeah. just do weird shit. Yeah. 
and surprise her when she come out and listen. It was it. Was, um, she's so nice like that, like so she's cool nice. and open. She's nice, yeah. She's a dear. Yeah, she's invited me to record in her studio. You know, come and record. Do it. It's so nice. It's I I've really been, I've love been it in out there. there. Yeah, I've reco- I actually recorded one song with her, uh, playing uh, guitar and harmony with me for a. Uh, there's a German documentary that we're both in that's going to come out hopefully this year. And What's it, it about? It's called. It's women in rock and roll. It's called like rocker girls or. Cool. Yeah, what's, I can't remember the name of it. Girls at Rock or something like that. And um, do you ever do anything with Kathy Valentine? You know, I I used to. Uh, I was in the original Blue Bonnet. You were. Yeah, I was the other guitar player with her, and um, that's when we were living in L.A. Oh, really? Yeah. And she that being in that band was, was that when they had that like Pinky. Pinky was singing. singing oh, yeah, yeah. That's when I first met her. I loved her. Yeah, yeah. I loved Sherry, the drummer. Yeah. And of course, Dominique is still in the band. Yeah. And, um, but I, I think they, that Kathy found it to be maybe something wasn't right for her with me in the band. Yeah, yeah. And she yeah. really didn't have a way to kick me out, but all of a sudden <laughs> they were like, <laughs> playing gigs and I didn't know about it and like oh I guess I'm not in the band anymore so um I was like oh well, I got a little sad about it because I really liked playing in the band yeah you know? and uh usually what happens when that happens is people go well you have your own career you know and, right right you know you're a solo artist yeah. and go do that and I'm like yeah well you're right you know <laughs> we've had a band but that they're great I yeah. still I, Eve Monsees I mean amazing she's one of my favorite guitar yeah. players yeah you know? so that's it's awesome to see the two of them play together. Yeah, it is. I think they feed each other, feed off of each other really well. Totally. Uh, we've, we've had a band for years, uh, like probably 13 years almost. No kidding. Yeah, and it, most of the time it's them with me singing and ah, my own songs. Really? Yeah, but... That's that's so good. Sometimes, the first time we did it, it was huge because I always wanted to have an all-female band. Yeah. And it was huge. and And then... Kathy afterwards was like, we, let's do this again, but like, let's not have all those people in it. <laughs> and so then we whittled it down to like mm-hmm. a four piece, like a garage rock band. It's so yeah. fun. She's so she, fun to play with. Man. She's such a great songwriter. Great songwriter. Great guitar yeah. player too. I love her. Uh, great guitar player. The feel of Soulful. her right hand is so sweet. Yeah. 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 She was, um, when I first started playing with her, she was, uh, Hanging out, uh, her boyfriend at the time was um, Clem Burke. No, um, the guitar player that passed away. Um, oh, Denny. Denny yeah. Friedman, mm-hmm. and she was kind of taking lessons from him, and because she was like, "I'm gonna play guitar," and and you know, she, we wanted this to be a blues band, yeah. you know. And in fact, we we had a really good gig. Um, we were playing at Angelica Houston's wedding, and Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall were there. <laughs> <laughs> watching us you know, how cool I, I think they were intrigued with the band you know it was we did some really cool stuff i think you know we had a big photo shoot with this uh a fashion magazine and we did some cool stuff i was like man this band could could really make it I, yeah. that's how i thought yeah i was thinking so that's why i was kind of like oh, i want to still be in this band you know but uh, you know, as it turned out, I was supposed to be doing other things, and so were they. And yeah. she was supposed to move to Austin, and I was supposed to move to Nashville. Yeah, and, you know, we. I, I think it's great how uh, people can play with each other temporarily, and yeah, and get a chance to experience each other's. Yeah. You know, it's like getting to have an affair without all the entanglements of an actual relationship. Totally, yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, like it was a great experience to work with her and them. Yeah. You know, so she's had a rough year, man. Has she? Yeah, I didn't know that. Her mom passed away, and then she like wow. really did a lot of soul searching. Went to I'm not speaking out of turn. Jeff seen her talk about this stuff too on publicly, but. She went to England. I think she's just now getting back. She's been there since like the end of October, beginning yeah, of November. Yeah, I saw on Facebook that she was in England. And well, her dog, like she left her dog and she was feeling really bad about it, but her dog got eaten by coyotes. Oh, The people man. that were watching her. Just what a rough... Oh, man. I know. 
You know, coyotes are um, really dangerous, and a lot of people don't know, but I've, um, I knew a woman whose daughter was killed by a pack of coyotes, and You're she was on a walk. Me. And then I saw on Facebook there was a coyote grabbing an, uh, a toddler by the seat of their pants and was dragging it off, and the, the dad saw him. So oh. I'm, I'm just saying this to people out there that just think, oh, coyotes, they're so sweet or whatever. No. Do not trust Savages. them. Savages, yeah. And, you know, if you're going to go for a walk out in places that have coyotes, take some kind of weapon with you to fight it off. Yeah. I don't know. Care. Maybe it's one of those pet <laughs> cans that you spray at it or whatever. <laughs> But uh, yeah, beware of the coyote. And I've I've been walking in my neighborhood, and I've run across two coyotes. Wow! And I'm nervous as heck to be around them. But another thing I wanted to say, yes, about Kathy Valentine, okay. is her book unbelievable is amazing to read. Unbelievable, and her life story. And so I'm gonna put a plug in for what are, people to get her. Oh, book. totally get it. Yeah. Um, um, she's a great writer. Uh, all I ever wanted, a rock uh, and roll memoir. I think all I ever wanted to do is that the title. No, all I all I or ever wanted. All I ever wanted. I think so. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's I read it a couple of crazy times. Crazy life, crazy and then, mom. Yeah, but did you ever meet her? Super. <laughs> no, super, I never got to meet super her. Super awesome. But the stories, lovely lady. She was at all of our shows when we play, she? and just yeah. Dang, I never got to meet. Her. Yeah, in fact, I saw her um, at the beginning of 2022. At a book thing that Kathy did at the uh, like the one Barnes and Noble left or whatever in Austin, yeah, yeah. yeah. I miss bookstores. I'm you, writing you, a book. You're right. You know what you said I think that I last time. About you that talked last about that last time, yeah. and you said you were doing it in style of short stories. Yeah, and you know who's helping me again with that? It's Kimmy Rhodes. Oh, we keep talking about this is the Kimmy Rhodes uh, segment. Yeah, because we're talking is, about her a lot. Um, but she helped me archive a bunch of my stuff in my garage. And she goes, like, I'm going to help you do this because I've done this for me and Gracie. Yeah. You got to get acid-free paper. You got to get acid-free boxes and start putting these things away and labeling them. And she, like, paid for stuff for me to get it going and sat there with me. And I've archived all my posters and uh, logged them in and numbered them. And I'm like, whoa, I would have never been able to do all this without her help you know it's like kimmy the good witch of of spicewood (laughs) yeah and she's like this is how you're going to write your book you have now you have your little drawers of stuff that have your photographs and your memoirs and that that'll be what you'll use to write your book yeah and she's been really helping guide i have to get back to her um for some more guidance. That book is great too. And the, the way that it's done is, is really, book. really amazing. She's Radio a, Dreams, such a good writer. Right? Radio Dreams. Yeah. And so was Gracie a great writer. And yeah. It was just, it was heartbreaking to go on the journey with him, you know, yeah. through his health issues. And, oh, you know, but it, it was like a book that makes you laugh and cry. Yeah. And it's, I highly recommend Radio Dreams to everybody. Yeah. Inspiring book another great book did you read the bow monster book jesse dayton's book i haven't read it i want to i want to buy that <laughs> i just book. love that dude i just like He's there's something about that writer. guy yeah i mean i i haven't read the book but i just like his i just like reading his posts yeah and he's, a, I mean, I, I like that guy. Like he's, he's I not, he's not ashamed of himself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, and I have no problem. I, I, I know what I you fi- mean by yeah, that. Too. I find it, I find him to be a refreshing to be around. Yeah. I like sometimes I see him on the trail and he's all yeah. sweaty. He's like, yeah. I'm getting my 10 miles in, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> and his wife is amazing too. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, they're, credits, they're he credits couple. getting his life together on this podcast to, to oh, meeting yeah. her. Yeah. He said he just didn't have his shit together. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes that's what it takes, you yeah. know, is finding somebody that can, you know, I, I kind of feel like I could I could credit a lot of the relationships I've had, you know, in, in my 30s and 40s and one last one in my 50s. Uh, I can credit those guys to teaching me a lot about, you know, life, um, music life um learning what not how what not to do in a relationship uh learning how to cook learning how to treat other people and yeah you know you learn 
you know. So without having to have gotten married, I I think I've benefited from a lot sure. of the relationships. Well, I haven't had a lot of them. I'd say four relationships that I've had that I learned from. It's pretty good. Four is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I find that it's hard because our life revolves around what people call peak highs like we go from the gig the tour yeah. the thing then we go to this thing then we go to that thing you know what i mean like our life and when there, we you lose that sort of living yeah. for the peaks it makes it hard and it make i think somebody that lives for those peaks is not easy to be in a relationship with if you're not going it, to those same exact you mean because if they don't reach the peak they're no, 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 because, a, no, 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 no. How when, do you mean? No, I, when I mean peak high, it's like, it's like the, a, a, a peak event. Like, like we're yeah. always on our way to something. You got the cruise coming up in February. Before that, you're going to California. You got, you know, you're coming to do this. These are all like high things and you have to be full on rosy. Oh, I see what you mean. And so yeah. when you, when you, when, when, when that, gigs, yeah. yeah. And your, your life to you seems to have this level of importance because there's a lot of people there that are depending on you to give them the thing that they came for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That it's kind of hard to, to, uh, that's what, that's what I've kind of come to the thing that I need to reassess mm -hmm. my life expectations because of being basically growing up a musician that's mm -hmm. on their way somewhere all the time to this really neat thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you want, you, you know, you want those really neat things, those, Peak events, as you call it, you you want them to start showing up on your calendar. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so when they're you can not there, have things to look forward to, and that's where you don't really know how to good. live like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like when someone comes off tour, yeah, and you don't know how you existed day to day in your house without that sort of. I've got to get the snap in because I got to sing tonight. We got the thing. I got to be sure I eat before that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how do you? How do you relate to another person? How do you live a normal life after that? A normal life yeah. after that. Or quote unquote normal life. Well, I mean, I kind of feel like that's what the pandemic taught me. You know, I thought, I feel like 2020 taught me how to just be at peace with what you have without having to go and do shows and different things. You know, may, like maybe I just learned how to be a little more normal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I kind of, sometimes I think, you know, when I'm coming down from those kind of tours and this and that, yeah. the cruise ship, I always kind of feel like I wish I could take two months now to just pull back and write or to just hang out with my cat or yeah. do some yard work, you know, yeah, do yeah. some painting or do some writing. Like I really like what I learned from the pandemic about staying home. Right. You know, and that may be me talking it as a woman that's getting older, you know, yeah. that I don't need as much stimulation to make me happy yeah. that way. Yeah, I know you what know? you mean by that. But um, but I do really, like, I am so looking forward to uh, a few of the things that are on my books, you know, like the cruise ship yeah. and the Meripolitan and, yeah. you know, house concerts and going back to New York. I am really um, psyched about getting to do that because I know... Like, and I want to put a European tour on the books, you know, this yeah. year, you know, and, and I'm psyched about getting in the studio. So, you know, I do, I guess I, uh, you know, like maybe still do love the peaks, you know. But yeah. I, I mean, guess we, I like it both. You yeah. Know? I want it both ways. You know, what's funny, you know, Bono has been married to the same lady the whole time. I, like since he was in high school, he was with her. I didn't. I didn't know that. And she does this thing when he comes home. He has to live in a hotel <laughs> near their house Are and slowly kidding? integrate back into life after a Is tour. That right? Yeah, she doesn't like that guy living at her house. She wants oh, the regular guy to come back. Yeah, come yeah. Down. yeah. No sunglasses guy in here. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. And Sting has been with the same wife, I think, for a. Many, Since many he left years. his other wife for her. Oh, he yeah, did. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so I didn't have that one right. Well, that synchronicity mine. record. That's, yeah, I think somebody oh, okay, yeah. somebody left somebody for somebody else, and then oh, that lady okay. was involved in it that yeah. he's married to now. But he's been with her for Jesus, that's 30, a long, forty years or something. Yeah, now. that's a yeah. really long relationship. John Bon Jovi too. That's another guy that's had the same high school girlfriend. Really? Yeah. My drummer's uh, Chris has had his wife since high school. Really? Yeah. 
He seems like that. He seems like the kind of guy that can handle it. He's just so good hearted, and they they both are. Yeah, you know they're they're just they just get along really good, and it's inspiring to see people. Yeah, like that. You know, I just I think I I don't know. I think I've just been uh, more of an independent kind of girl, and yeah. Uh, Maybe that's why it, I don't know why it hasn't. Sometimes I try to think about that. I'm like, why well, haven't things worked out for me, you know? And uh, a lot of people say, oh, you're intimidating because you play guitar or whatever. I'm like, bullshit on that. You know, I don't think I'm intimidating because I play guitar. It's not because you play guitar, but it's what, what the way that you play guitar and all that stuff represents a level of confidence that can sometimes Maybe. make a man's wiener feel smaller than it actually is. Is that what you, well, you've gone ahead and just put it right out Sorry. there. <laughs> Sorry. I just, that's, that's really what it, it is, is at it that point. Yeah. Like that. I've always liked like really that. strong women. Yeah. That's always been, like, I feel good about that with yeah. myself. I've never really gone out with a couple people that weren't like super independent and like yeah. had their own yeah thing yeah i think um <clears throat> i think it's important as a, a female guitar player and especially since you said that i think it's really important when you're learning to play to play from a woman's heart yeah like you don't have to play like you have a penis no you know and i try to play from up here yeah from my chest, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and pull it out through my voice and my heart, you yeah. know. And where I've seen a, a, a lot of women that are, maybe it's more the rock and roll chicks that are more rock and roll that are hold the guitar down between their legs. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and even though I wish I could play like that and admire Like Lita them, Ford or something, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but I, I just admire those women so much and I yeah. wonder how their love life is. Yeah. You know, I'd like to to talk to them. I talked to Nancy Wilson from Heart, but not about her love life very much. I wasn't supposed to because she divorced the Cameron Crowe guy and has a new oh, guy and you're not right. supposed to get into it. Right, Couldn't Cameron talk about her sister because they were in the middle of a fight. Yeah. I even had a pre-interview thing with her. Oh, you did? <laughs> is it on, can we listen? It got, it was for Seton Hospitals. This is so weird. It was like oh. in May of 2021 yeah. and they did a thing that was like a wine tasting and everyone got this box of wine at home and it was live streamed and they just wouldn't give me the audio for it. Cause I went into hey. it doing it. Can I have the audio for this? And they yeah. were like, of course. Oh. And then they were like, no, we don't have it. And I was like, come on, man, you've got the video. I'm like, no, yeah. we don't have it. They just didn't want to give it to you. No. But I got to do it, and it was neato. Yeah. Well, that's good memories. Then. Yeah. But she, she, her, her, there's a lot of, uh, the one, one thing she did talk about was there was a lot of, there's a lot of sexuality in her, mm. like in her, re, like uh, behind her intention in playing guitar. Mm. It's all very like humpy. <laughs> <laughs> humpy. <laughs> I had a woman, um, and I, I think she, no, I know she was, gay because she was trying to hit on me but uh and i did a show in new mexico and she was like wow you you play really butch you, know, like, you play so butch and i'm like really i'm like i don't i don't know if i uh, agree with that you know i said because first of all i'm not right and I said, but you are, so maybe you read it that way, you know. And she goes, no, 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 you you play very butch. And I'm like, I think what she meant to say, in other words, was like, you play like a dude. Is that what she meant? You're not sure? Uh, I mean, I get it. Are you, like Kathy, like you, there's, it's not dainty. Yeah. It's not uh, effeminate. Yeah. And, you know, it's, well, how, it's, how it's, it's, it's like rock and roll guitar playing. How do you shred and be I don't, feminine. I don't think there's any sex in that, really. I think I think yeah. that that's totally just its own thing. I mean, we apply sex to it, yeah. right? Because sometimes the sexy people, like you know, yeah. hump in the air while they're doing it or whatever. But or whatever. I don't know. It, Jimi Hendrix. I feel like had a sexuality to his guitar oh, playing yeah. that was very oh, like yeah. his whole body was consumed in this thing. Yeah. Prince is like that. But yeah. like Mike Campbell, I don't think of sex when I hear him play, and he's one of my favorites. 
Oh, I do when I hear him. You play. do. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always feel like there's a guy with a lot of heart and a lot of soul, but he's yeah. not. He's not. And I, I, I can think of guitar players that are amazing that just play. They're almost like studious about it. Yeah. And they, they, they don't play from any skunk. Kind of Sex skunks is super skunks super oh skunk baxter yeah is that you would do the that's me of? with skunk baxter but you were just a kid in that mm. picture yeah, it was like 20 years ago i met uh skunk baxter back in the back in the la days he's cool he's yeah, weird I, man he's like a he's a he's a super spy he's a uh he's a spy he's a special forces uh yeah when he? I, yeah he <laughs> for the United States Army during the United States Afghanistan War, he was stationed in a bunker. Was he? Like five stories underground for six months out of the year doing counterterrorism. Uh, skunk Baxter? The Skunk Baxter. That was his gig. What? I was in this band, Endosheen, and, and their manager was friends with them, and he loved the band, and he would play with us. And yeah. so that was, he played with us at Austin City Limits Festival. He played with us in D.C. a couple times. It was awesome. Dang. He's really nice. He's really, I mean, he's a cop. <laughs> he is a, a cop. cop. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. There's a couple guys that ended up, like, I think Dan Aykroyd is, he told me a couple guys that were, like, some kind of, like, specialist that cops go to for, like, weird stuff like that. But he's a counterterrorism expert. <laughs> Good to know. And a great solo on that reel in in the years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I aspire to um, keep getting better on that guitar. And yeah. It's nice to listen to people like him play, and I need to look up some videos of him. And, um, you know, I listen to Jeff Beck. I listen to, you know, just all kinds of people, uh, even, you know, Mike Molnar, who I is in my band. I saw him playing with Ronnie Dawson and, you know, just listening to him play. And, you know, I just, I just try to be inspired by other guitar players. And, uh, I just feel like I still have a long way to go to, yeah to reach the Nirvana quote unquote of feeling like that yeah place where when you play, you just you go out of your head and you're yeah. just, it just makes you feel like flying. And, and every once in a while, I'll get to those places, you know, and I'll reach it, you know, in the middle of a set, you know. And but you don't expect it to It feels you. so it good. Just, it but, just happens to you. Yeah, you don't expect when it's going to happen. make it, it happen. It just like flies out yeah. of your fingers and you're like, ah, you know. Yeah. And I would love to be able to just have that feeling because it's like flying. Yeah. And I love that. You know? Yeah. And also, you know, you can reach that when you're singing sometimes. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. You know, and that, I, d I don't have the range I used to have. I used to be able to sing really high and, um, you know, have a little bit more control. And, you know, I lis listen back to some of the stuff that I used to sing. There's a video that um, he put out of me and Katie Moffat when he ha we had our duo that just came out on Facebook yesterday. No, it came out on New Year's Day. Okay. And uh, I was like, whoa, I can't sing like that anymore. <laughs> You know, but really, but it was like mm. there's a different way that I can use my voice now, yeah. and I could still reach that yeah. plateau where you're like you're sailing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you got to keep working at it. You yeah. know, if you want to reach those little nirvanas. So yeah. That that's that's my thing. That's how I keep going at my age. Is still want to reach those spots. That's you know? good. Some I think places. that's the only way to to stay in the game. And young. I think so. Or youthful. Youthful. We're yeah. not going to stay young. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't stay young. In our mind, yes. Yeah, we can stay youthful. Yeah. Um, uh, people should check out these singles that you have out. Uh, so sad to watch a good love go bad. And uh, I've got a right to cry. Thank you. Yeah. Those are the latest ones. Those are with the Talisman. With the Talisman. Rosie Flores and the Talisman. Those are out on Mule Kick Records and more soon to be released um, um, this year. Go to rosieflores.com. Uh, you Blue Moon Jazz Quartet is taking a break from the Tuesday residency. Yeah. But coming just back? Coming back in February. Okay. And that's Tuesdays, 830 to 10. Except for when I'm on the cruise ship, which is going to be toward the end of the month. Okay. So we'll be there uh, the first part. I think I'm only going to miss one Tuesday. 
But if you go there now uh, for this month, Sue Foley's taking oh, the Tuesdays at really thirty to ten. So I want to go and catch one of those. Yeah, I'm me a big too. Fan of her playing. Me too. Hey, are, I, I interviewed, and I can't remember if I talked to her about you, but do you know Jennifer Magnus? Yeah, she's really nice. She's really, really nice. talented woman. She's a great singer. Yeah, yeah, and plays guitar and writes. And yeah, I met her. When I first moved to town, she was, she took me to go see a, a house that I was thinking about buying. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was doing real estate for, I don't know if she still is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I talked to her a few months ago and she seemed, she was really nice. Like, uh, do you know that uh, engineer, Lenise Bent? I do not. She's fantastic. She's the first woman to record a million selling record. Ah, uh, where which does she was live? Blondie's Rapture. Uh, in uh austin los angeles oh she lives in la and she to mention that that she know and i was like you know i've been i heard about her during the pandemic and did all this like oh this is the coolest lady like how do i get her on the show and i was like is there any way you can hook us up she's like yeah what's your phone number and two days later like a phone rings i answer hello hi johnny this is lenise bent i was like oh <gasps> i actually was like can i just call you back in a minute and she was like yeah she's like <laughs> so I had to get the off the phone, phone like, yeah. <laughs> all right, get cool, get cool. Don't squeal. Yeah. Don't squeal. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like the assistant engineer on Steely Dan Asia on like Breakfast in America by Super Tramp. And then she became the engineer for uh, the guy that, that Kathy went out with, uh, the huge oh, producer Danny guy. Freeman. No, no, no. Oh, no, the, uh, the Kathy Bound? The guy, yeah, the guy that did the knack and he did Blondie. Oh, oh, Clem. No, 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 no. He's oh. the producer guy. Oh, I don't know the producer. She guy. She left Clem for with. the guy. I just read the. I just read the Holly Knight I, book. Oh, and well, Holly, oh, okay. Yeah. Holly Knight told the story about Holly her hooking Knight. up with this producer, and then they went to a Blondie, or he was Clem was playing with the Eurythmics, and they went to Italy to break up with him. Like she accompanied Kathy to go break up with Aww. Clem, but then Kathy couldn't do it. Mike Chapman. That's the guy's name. Oh, my The producer Chapman. guy. I know yeah. who that is. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they they dated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know either until I, I read the, the, I was texting Kathy. I was like, man, I never knew that. I never knew like party Kathy. I've only known like serious business, sober Kathy. Mm -hmm. And she's fun. But like, I would love to have like a week of like crazy Kathy in my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Rosie, this has been great. I look forward to anything you and the talisman do. And Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to come over here and talk to you. It's very fun to talk to you. And it's always so inspiring. Thank you. So like sitting down Thank and watching you. those videos with my aunts yesterday, I was just like, Aww. I felt so uh, proud. Like I was there with my actual family. And then I'm like, you and I don't know each other that well, but we're mm -hmm. family. Yeah. We're part of this giant family thing. And yeah. then I was like, wow, you know. I'm not joking. Like, it's so inspiring to see somebody so engaged with what they're doing still after mm. doing it for so long. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. That's the thing I always want to make sure that I don't lose. And you're someone that will make sure I don't. Yeah. Don't don't lose it. No. Yeah. No, I won't. This, uh, this, this episode has been sponsored by Kimmy Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> and Kathy Valentine. And Kathy we Valentine. About her a lot. Yes. Get the books. <laughs> Your book. How, so there's book, a lot of work that needs to go into I, I still have a lot of work. I would like to think that if I can apply myself that it might be able to come out in the fall of 23. Okay. And, wow. And uh, so I just, I have to have a lot of discipline. Yes. To make myself do it. And I'm, I'm just so, I'm all over the place. Yeah. So managing myself I have to micromanage my own self, and uh, I, I just need to find the time to do it. And uh, it would be so much fun yeah. to do, so I have to do it. It seems like it would be fun. It would yeah. be daunting. It's been fun. All the work I've put into it thus far has been really fun. Yeah. And I just, I just need to get down to brass tacks. Yeah. And it's just that I'm, you know, I'm trying to write songs, I'm trying to record, yeah. I'm trying to... I paint and, you know, do live gigs and travel. Right. And so how do you, you know, that's my challenge is how do I do all of that and have the time to do all of that? And it, I just think it really has a lot to do with applying myself and being disciplined. Yeah. 
and I have a tendency to be lazy sometimes and just go and be entertained by other people. Yeah. Well, we need Watch that. Watch movies yeah. and go see other bands play and, you know. Yeah. That kind of stuff. <laughs> well. A I'm girl's sh- got to have fun. <laughs> That's exactly what I always say. Girls yeah. just want to have fun. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for doing the show again. Thank you for having me. Go to rosieflores.com. Yeah, well, go there and come see me live and find out how did I get here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gang, that's Rosie Flores. You can find her at rosieflores.com. Her latest singles from Rosie Flores and the Talisman. Uh, so sad to watch love, good love go bad. And I've got a right to cry, which you're hearing right now as it faded out. And it'll be fading back in in a minute and you heard the rest of it. You can find her at rosieflores.com. Find her wherever it is you stream and download music. What a great time I have talking to Rosie. I love her. I love her. She's one of my idols, man. Get out there. Get involved. Check her out. Rosie, she's amazing. RosieFlores.com. All right, gang. And hey, don't forget when you're out there checking out RosieFlores.com, you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you stream and download podcasts or do whatever. Uh, new podcasts every Tuesday and every Friday. And we drop a lot of From the Vaults on Saturday nights. In fact, the last one, if you go through our, our feed here, the, the episode right before uh, Rosie Flores, I reposted the sticks from a couple years ago from 2021 where I talked to James J.Y. Young from Sticks. Yeah, that's right. All right. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I want to thank Rosie for coming by. That was a great long conversation, right? Have a great week. Whatever it is you're doing, go to rosieflores.com. Follow us, like us, love us. Let's get down. 